Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech. And if you're looking at that screen, that is a sweet virtual zoo brochure that we made in Google Docs. Now, if you haven't completed that, I'll put a link up above. It is more fun on the next part if you have that done. But what we're going to do is we're going to start Google Sheets and make our own virtual zoo Google Sheets. So, my friends, let's get cracking. All right, friends, so the brochure video will have a link up here on the right if you haven't done it. But if you have done it, it's time to move to Google Sheets. What we're going to do is click File New, and we're going to launch a spreadsheet. If you don't have the Google Doc on any Google tab, you can also click this App Tool, and you can find Google Sheets. Either way, we need one of those Google Sheets open. I'm going to close my extra one and I'm going to move back to this untitled spreadsheet and I'm going to name it Virtual Zoo and I'm going to put my initials after it. You should put your initials as well. Friends, spreadsheets have things called rows and columns and then in those rows and columns there are cells. Right now I'm sitting at D6. You'll see here that it highlights the D, it highlights the 6. That way you know the locations. Right now I'm at B10. You always read them with the letter first. You don't say 10B, you say the letter and then you say the number. Right now I'm going to ask you to look at this one and before I say it, please tell me what you think that location would be. I will pause while you come up with your idea. Hopefully you came up with E21 for the location. Spreadsheets are fantastic for collecting data, and that's what we are going to do. We're going to collect data for our virtual zoo. So the first thing I want you to do is go to A3, and I want you to type animal. I'm going to also show you real quickly that if you go between the A and the B, your cursor changes, and you can stretch A so it's a little longer. This will be handy later as we type longer names. Right now, though, let's go to B3. In cell B3, I want you to type height, and I want you to also put centimeters. Uh, that is important because that's what we're going to measure in. And then I need you to type weight, and I want you to type kilograms. And then the last one I want you to type is offspring, which is how many babies they have. Then I want you to return to your virtual zoo. If you didn't create this, you're just going to have to make these up, or you can get this one done. And I am going to do the penguins, the giraffe, and the tree frog. So I simply write those in right here. And then I want you to also add two other fun ones below. So we're going to have five of these. So I'm going to do the lion, and I'm going to do a polar bear. Now when you search for these pieces of information, some of them need to be more specific. Like there are so many penguins. So I am going to do the emperor penguin. You can search for whatever you want, but then once you decide you want to find the numbers, it's as simple as this. Start a brand new tab, and I'm going to search with Google. You can use what you want. But remember, we are doing the Emperor Penguin. So E-M-P-E-R, and I'm going to type Emperor Penguin, and I'm going to do the height, but I'm going to make sure I label it with centimeters. It tells me they are approximately 122 centimeters tall. These can vary, but that's what I'm going to put in, is 122. We do not label this, we just want to make sure that we have a number for each of these, because later we're going to make a chart. So let's go to the weight in kilograms. So we simply change what is being searched, and when we press enter, we can find out lots of cool information, finding out also that they go between 22 and 45 kilograms. So I'm going to put the max, I'm going to put 45 kilograms for my number in the weight box. Helps if you actually hit the right keys. Once again, do not add labels because that way we can sort it. Let's check offspring quick. If we do emperor penguin and we type offspring after it, it tells us that they lay one egg. So the offspring of a penguin is one. That is how you collect your data, friends. You're not graded by your data, uh, but we do use the data, so make sure you get as accurate as you can. Let's do these steps quickly for the giraffe. Once again, type in the word we're looking for. Mine was giraffe. You can do whatever you want. I'm going to work backwards because offspring is right here at the top. 
Notice they only give birth to one at a time. Do not always trust the first thing that you see though. Let's see if there's another place where they've got information. And this is a second location where it verifies that they usually only have one baby at a time. So I'm gonna call that confirmed. And the giraffe offspring is one. Let's find that giraffe weight. Now I wanna get back to my Google search. So let's use the back. And then up here, we're going to change that to say weight. The northern giraffe is about 1,800 pounds. Once again, you can double check. I'm going to stick with this number. Uh-oh, I don't want pounds. So let's go back and make sure we add that kilograms after it. And this time we can find out it is about 1,192 for the adult male. So I'm going to put 1,192. big difference in weight between the penguin and the giraffe and let's check that height and see how different that is as well once again height and remember we are doing centimeters it is 500 to 600 so i'm going to put the max 600 in this box so friends you're going to have to take your other three animals and you're going to have to complete those steps on your own we also need to take care of some special headings up here. Let's start with what's called merging cells. I want you to click in the middle of A1. So see, I am click, hold, and drag. And I'm going to drag all the way out to D. That's called selecting. And then I want you to find the merge button. And I want to merge all of them. So now I've got one large box where there used to be four separate columns. I'm going to type virtual zoo. And that lands on the left edge, but I want to switch it to the center. I also want to pick an amazing font. So I could select right through the list, but I'm going to show you that there are more that you can find. Scroll down and find one you like. I'm going to scroll down and use lobster. When I hit OK, it shows up kind of nifty, but I want to make it a prettier color. I'm going to do a green, and I'm going to make it much larger. I'm going to go all the way to size 24. I also want the fill to be an awesome color. I'm going to tell you that I prefer these two rows right here, and I'm going to put this yellow behind my virtual zoo. I want these to be headings as well. So we're going to select all four of them. You could do one at a time and we're gonna make them bold. It is also nicer when they are centered, so let's align them like that. Alrighty, friends, so this is the format. Now you need to finish and collect the rest of the data for your zoo so that you've got the complete project. When you're done with this step, you need to turn in a screenshot. You can use the Chromebook screenshot tool, or you can use Nimbus. I've had a video that shows you how to add that. When you hit Nimbus, it is kind of nice. You can do capture selected area, and then you get to grab the area that you want to share. Notice those little boxes go away. That shows my zoo, and I can save it to my downloads folder so it's ready to turn in. Notice it has the date, and then I can return to classroom, and I'm going to add the file. Remember that I upload from my device. Mine was in downloads, and it had today's date. When you upload that and turn it in, I will be able to check it and give you a grade. Make sure you're patient though, because it does take a second for this screen right here to pop up where you can actually hit turn in on your groovy little project. And remember friends, if you ever need to, you can unsubmit, change it, give me a better copy. But that way you still get to work on this project because you did not give me access to it. And I still get to see your cool finished project in Google Classroom. So remember, this is part one. Make sure you get this done so that we're ready for part two. I hope you enjoyed the process and I hope your zoo is starting to look pretty cool. Friends, if you did enjoy the lesson, make sure you give it a like. If you got a question, comment, or a suggestion, add it down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit the notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.